we're live. Praise rambling again. Hallelujah. Welcome to Grace Fellowship of Georgetown. We're glad you're tuning in or watching by whatever means. Spirit of God's here. And you know, we believe this word is the most valuable thing we possess. Amen. It keeps us in connection to truth. And I want you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5. I want to read a couple of verses out of that. Ephesians chapter 5. Let me get my notes situated too since I do that. And, and beforehand, with everybody reminding me of all the things I needed to do, all the ladies telling me the stuff I needed to do, yet not a single one told me just now start your timer. Had to remember that as well, didn't I? Fun to be in a church where we're family. Amen. Ephesians 5, have you got it? Go with me to verse number 25. It says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. For it really should be her. And you understand that Jesus died for the church, right? But he died with a purpose. Let's look at verse number 26. It says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Here we see that Jesus intends to present to himself this glorious bride. His church, right? We know from Revelation uh, 19, we read it two weeks ago when I was here, that it says the bride has made herself ready. Amen. That it's not all the Christianity. All of Christianity is not the bride. It's those that are really pressing into God and making themselves ready as the Spirit leads. Right? So he's going to present this church to himself. But it says in verse 26, and he, may, and he might sanctify or set it apart as special and cleanse it by the washing of the water by the word. One of the reasons we come to church is so we can cooperate with God in the process of sanctification, the changing, the cleansing. Now, understand, all the cleansing doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean that there's filthy sin on you. It means there's things you're doing or in, that are in your life maybe out of alignment with the perfect will of God. You can live what we would normally say was a sin-free walk. I understand we all make mistakes. But you're not drinking, drinking or smoking or gambling or running around, you know, and you're watching your words. But you can still be out of alignment with the will of God for your life. You can be in the wrong church. Not you guys, other people, right? You maybe not be praying as much as God would have you pray or in the word as much. or, you know, In other words, you're living what people would call a moral life, but it's still not sanctified unto God in his perfect will. And it says there's a cleansing he wants to do in us that all of that is taken, place, taken care of, right? Polished up, finished up. But this is by the washing of the water of the word or by the word. And I want to talk just for a minute about this washing by the word. Because uh, it's not just reading the word that cleanses you. If reading the word cleansed people, we would have everybody that ever read a Bible cleaned up. And there are people that have memorized great portions of scripture, but they've never been born again. They still retain their sin. Do you follow me? If just reading the word cleaned a person, then if a person read enough word, even though they weren't born again, they'd be cleansed. But how many know that word doesn't do it by itself? It takes the Holy Spirit functioning with the word to clean you. It takes the Spirit of God to get you birthed again. But understand the revelation of being born again is in the word. So it's the word with the Holy Spirit's cooperation or leading or instruction that sanctifies us. It cleanses us. And we've been in a process, most of us, for quite a few years where the Spirit of God's teaching us that word. Showing us things we can do to better 
align our lives with His will, how we can live by faith. We've been on a series now for some time on Thursday nights on the principles of the kingdom of heaven. In fact, we just finished the book of Matthew last Thursday night. We found everything by the everything in heaven operates by spiritual laws, much like everything in the world operates by laws of physics. And Jesus came to teach us these spiritual laws. He said, if you'll do this, you will get these results, right? So he said, you can speak to a mountain if you believe and doubt not. You can tell it to be thrown in the sea and it'll obey you, right? He talked about the power of seed, many other spiritual principles. We discovered over 100 of them, uh, in fact, closer to 150 of them in the book of Matthew alone, spiritual laws or spiritual principles. And so part of the sanctification process is learning these principles, because if you don't learn them, you won't do them. If you don't do them, you build your house on the sand, Jesus said. He said, if you hear my sayings and don't do them, you build your house on the sand. These sayings were these spiritual principles or spiritual laws. I uh, hope we're not stretching you too far this morning already. But God wants us to live a life of victory. A life of overcoming. That's his plan. And as we do and we continue following the Holy Spirit, he will lead us into the glory of God. And I think we're entering in right now to that glory. It's a time of God doing a finishing work on his church. And those that maybe have not been in the process very long, guess what? God accelerates all things in the end times. He can do in you in a week what maybe somebody else that took years to experience. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's not limited by time. Ooh, there you go, Lynn. The Holy Spirit, she, she any time to say something quantum, Lynn goes, oh. God can accelerate things in your life. He can deposit in you in one night enough revelation that it would have taken you years normally to learn in a, in a church setting. Amen. And he's doing it. He's getting us to the place we can walk like Jesus. And so we've been on a series this year, Sunday mornings, for the most part, how that New Year's Eve, God told me, he showed me the church coming into a coherence. That out of the chaos and confusion of COVID in 2019 and 2020, I'm sorry, 2020 and 2021, that in 2022, God's leveling things out and bringing the church into an agreement to manifest the power of God. Because if two or more shall agree, it'll be done, right? And when I saw that vision of God bringing us into coherence, it reminded me of a laser beam. And God told me it's time for the church to convert word to walk. Do you follow me? That we've been being pumped full of word for some of us decades. The Spirit of God instructing us, getting us ready, cleaning us up, sanctifying us, cleansing us by the washing of the water of the word. That now it's time for a release. And again, I'm not going to teach on laser beams tonight, but we found out in our studies that inside of the laser source material, as energy has been pumped in, there's a supernatural process of entanglement taking place where photons are bouncing back and forth between mirrors, creating other photons of like phase, direction, and uh, frequency, wavelength. That when it gets to this high enough level, it escapes as a laser beam. And I believe we've been between two mirrors. In fact, Paul compared the word of God to a mirror. Beholding as a face, your natural beholding as a glass, your natural face, right? That that glass is a looking glass, the mirrors. We've been between these two mirrors bouncing back and forth with God. That all of a sudden, at the right time, God says, okay, you're at the, you're at the high enough level, you're going to escape as a beam of light. Do you follow me? And in that process of escaping, you will be converting your word into walk. Do you follow me? For example, if here's the mirror, there's another mirror over here, we've been in between the word, bouncing for some time, developing, building, strengthening. But all of a sudden, we get to the right level, and God said, okay, I'm about to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Boom, there's a release. We go through the mirror because it's a partial mirror. We go through it, and now we're visible light. 
before it was embedded within the source material, but now it's released to become visible to the world. And we discovered just how little power it takes to create a huge uh, power source in a laser beam. Amen? You know, an example I have is these bulbs up here are 60 to 100 watt bulbs. Some may be more. And uh, 60 watts. Think about 60. I have at home a laser beam that is one half watt. Less than 1% of the battery power in my little handheld laser as is in these light bulbs. Just one of them. And the laser will go 20 miles. See, when you convert scattered light to focused light in a laser beam, coherent light, it becomes much more powerful. And God's doing that through the Word. This Word's within us. How many know there's power in the Word? Hebrews 4.12, the Word of God is alive and it's powerful. And it's embedded within us now. And now it's about to escape as the glory, as the light to go forth and become visible to the world. We're right now in the time of that release, I believe. So again, I want you to remember this. We are converting word to walk. Do you follow me? Anybody want to be used in this fashion? See, I'm ready to be released visibly. More than just some, you know, uh, Facebook posts. I want, I want the power of God manifesting from me outwardly to the world. And the same power that's on Jesus is on me and it's on you. And we can do the same works he did. And it's time to become released to light. So with that in mind, turn to 1 John. We've been in this verse for a while now. 1 John chapter 1. Verse number 7, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. I like that. I want to be cleansed. How about you? But the key is, it says we can walk in the light as he is in the light. Now listen, you can't do that of your own ability. How much light did Jesus walk in? He was the light. Are you following me? It's one thing for me to walk around here in the visible light given off by these bulbs, but it's another thing for me to come the, become the bulb. I mean, to be the light. He walked. He was the light. And this is weird to walk in the light as he is in the light. And the only way we do this is by the power of the Spirit of God and by the power of the Word. And all this Word has been within us, residing, building, strengthening, changing, correcting for all this time. God's about to do a work where it supernaturally enables us to be a laser beam. To walk in the same level of illumination as Jesus did. And I've been studying what's it mean to walk in the light. Because if you ask the average Christian, what does it mean to walk in the light? They will say, well, it means we try to be nice people. Just walk in as much love as you can. Just do some good deeds. Try to be a blessing to people. Well, praise God for that. But did you know the wicked can do that as well? Let me rephrase that. Unbelievers can do that as well. There's some really nice heathen out there. They're not born again. But they have a desire to be liked by people. I mean, if you have the, if you have the very nature of compassion... You really want people to like you, right? 30% all have the, have the compassion gift, the compassion motivational personality. You want people to like you. And the truth is, we all want people to like you. And it's not really a deep revelation to know if you're nice to people, they're more likely to like you. Even if you're a sinner. So there's a lot of people in the world that have never been born again that have learned to be nice. Do good deeds. Give away gifts, right? And by the way, I forgot to read this card earlier, but I got a card from Elizabeth's Village. 
uh, they had a oh, it's here somewhere. They had a fundraiser golf tournament here last week that I showed up for. I didn't play any golf. I was walking with them and hitting balls, but I sowed golf balls all over that course. But I didn't hit a building. This is Grace Fellowship. Thank you so much for supporting our first annual golf scramble by participating. With your help, we were able to raise over $11,060 for women and children in Scott County. We appreciate you. Here's this village staff with a heart. So uh, Larry brought us into that. And uh, Barry, I and Larry played uh, from this church and Eric Huster from the Lexington Church as a team. And uh, we were there. I won't say how we did, amen. By the way, Larry's a phenomenal golfer. Anyway, people think this is the source of, of uh, uh, walking in light. It's funny. Uh, here's a benevolent activity, a fundraiser for Elizabeth's Village, which we support as a church. Pastor Rebecca goes and supports them in person. And uh, maybe somebody else, I think somebody else is looking at doing it. And so we're trying to help Elizabeth Village, but they had this fundraiser raising $11,000, and they had a raffle with it. You know what the grand prize was? $400 worth of bourbon. <laughs> and I didn't win. The point I'm making is, as there were a whole lot of people wanting that bourbon, they're supporting the fundraiser, which is a good thing. So we can see here that potentially sinners can do good deeds. That was a long way around about it, wasn't it? So walking in the light, as he is in the light, can't be just being good deed doers. Although that will be a result of it. It can't be just trying to be a nice person because the wicked can do that. It's got to be a manifestation of something above what the world can do or produce. Are you following me? And I want to give you three things. I, I've been researching scripture about walking in the light. What's it mean? I want to give you three things it means to walk in the light. Number one, it means to always know and do God's will for you every day. Jesus was never out of the will of God. In fact, he said, I only do those things I see the Father do. He always knew what God wanted him to do because he had continual communion with the Father. And I always responded with, yes, sir, in his communion. Do you follow me? I'm just trying to throw in the word, yes, sir, but with, I will do that. Not my will, but yours be done. And I want to look at a few verses that deal with this. Turn with me to Psalm 4. How many know all of our answers are in this word? Psalm 4. And why do I have? Must have wrote something down wrong. Hang on a minute. This did not surprise me. Go look up something. I mess it up that bad. Sorry about this. Y'all bear with me. Now my whole note page disappeared. Where's it at? There it is. Oh, it's Proverbs. I got it written in Proverbs. Why did I go to Psalms? 
You know why? Because no ladies told me they would have. So how did I miss that that bad? Proverbs chapter 4. Well, that was embarrassing. Verse 18. And Pastor Rebecca has full authority to edit out that whole quiet section once we go. She'll pick it up with, go to Proverbs 4, verse 18. But the path of the just, that word just there means righteous, is as the shining light that shineth more and more under the perfect day. Uh-oh. The path of the just means the way or direction you walk as a shining light. So we see here to walk in the light means you walk in the path God has for you. You're not doing your own thing every day. You're doing God's thing every day. You're always in communion with God that you know, here's what he wants me to do right now in these decisions. Now listen, don't get paralyzed like I've seen some people do. You know, how many times should I brush my teeth? Up and down, sideways. You follow me? What tie should I wear or what shoes should I wear? You know, God gives you authority to make basic decisions. You don't need his permission, you know, to wear an ugly outfit if you want to. But you need to know what he wants you to do with decisions that are weightier. Do you follow me? Even what you should do in your day. Amen. Should I go shopping? Should I clean the house? Should I go, you know, Ministering or whatever, you hear God in these things, and when something threatens you as far as as far as an attack or a challenge, you always go to God. God, what should I do in this situation? Even when you can't find something, God, where's it at? He'll be right there, right? He is my number one tool finder. He's got to be Patty's phone finder because every day, where did I set my phone? You can do two things. You can pray to God and ask him, or you can tell me to dial it. We'll listen for the ring. The path of the just is a shining light. Listen, this shineth more and more under the perfect day. We're approaching the perfect days. In other words, he's saying the closer we get to the end, the more light is going to shine on our ways. Oh, praise God. I want to walk in this light as he was in the light. Look at, look at the next verse, verse 19. The way of the wicked is his darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Now, we're going to read in a minute about Jesus quoting these very passages. The wicked have no idea how to hear God what to do. So they can only set their own course and they're going to end up stumbling. As brilliant as they seem, as wise as they appear, they're going to make mistakes, many times big ones. It's going to cause a stumble. Go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse number 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Wow. He that followeth me shall not walk, on dark, and walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now, I want life, right? The word life there in the Greek is the word zoe, meaning the fullness of the God kind of life. No sickness, no lack, no fear, uh, no defeat. But he says, you've got to walk in the light. And he says, he's the light of the world. He that walks after him shall not walk in darkness, right? Walks in the light, shall not walk in darkness. Here again we see. Jesus said, if you follow me, you'll walk in the light. Now, and then he was talking to, to the disciples. But this applies to us by following the same Holy Spirit that led him. Do you follow me? It's important we create and develop this relationship with God 
We're always in tune to his frequency. Amen. God has his own frequency. You hear it with your heart. And you can develop a sensitivity to his will to know, am I in the will of God or not? You don't have to hear a voice. You'll just know. Amen. How many of you had that happen before when you're about to say something and something inside says, don't say that? Almost like there's a grip on your throat. Don't say that. And you said it anyway. Why? Because you had a decision to make and you followed flesh instead of spirit, right? Then what did you have to do after you said it? You had to hear God again how to clean up the mess. God, how do I fix this? He said, you're on your own. I told you not to say it. He doesn't do that, does he? He'll, he'll help you even with the mistakes. So we've got to be in this, this place where we hear God's leading accurately. And you know it down here. I uh, Friday morning, Patty wanted to study some for a Friday night. You know, just get her heart prepared. She wanted me to watch the dogs. So I said, I'm going to take the dogs out in the car and go to some garage sales. I didn't get more than a few blocks away and know I'm not supposed to be out here. I circled a little bit and I came home and, and, and instead got on what God wanted me to do. And I'm telling you, as long as you're out of the will of God, things won't go right. I mean, you'll drop the tool you're using or break the dish or forget what you really needed for your appointment or whatever. Because why? You missed God somewhere along the way and you're out of sync. And to walk in the light as he's in the light, you stay in sync with God. Is this too hard this morning? You can make U-turns, that's right, legal U-turns, right? It's all based on this relationship. It's not a set of do's and don'ts and here's what you can and can't involve yourself in. It's about just a flow. A lifestyle of connection with God. And there's where your peace is. There's where your joy is. Look at John chapter 11. John chapter 11 verse 9. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. Now, who's the light of the world? We just read Jesus is the light of the world, right? We see Jesus in everything we're doing. Or we connect ourselves to Jesus in everything we're doing. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there's no light in him. Now, really, this is quoting straight out of Proverbs 4, not Psalm 4, Proverbs 4. And he says, if a man walks in darkness, he stumbles, listen, because there's no light in him. Now, here we have another clue. In your, in your connecting to God and flowing with him, it's got to have some level of light in you to be successful. And what would that light in you be? The word we've been bouncing back and forth, back and forth all this time. See, if you're going to hear God accurately, everything you hear God tell you to do must align with the word of God. I mean, God's not going to tell you, uh, you know, steal that. You've been wanting one of those. There it is. Steal it. They're not looking. See, that was God. He wasn't looking. Well, you know, thou shalt not steal. Right? You know, lying's out of bounds. Cheating's out of bounds. Even wrong thoughts are out of bounds. And all this word you've been putting in you creates a foundation that then you can be led by the Spirit accurately from. Because without the word, you will be misled. You will be deceived. So it for the washing of the water of the word to take place, you need both word in you and Spirit of God leading you. Because there's many voices out there. And some are meant to lead you astray. So the word keeps you in alignment. And he says, 
those in darkness stumble because there's no light in there. There's no word in them to keep what they hear aligned with truth. So the wicked here, they're not looking, take it, there it is, you've been wanting that. Oh yeah, here's my chance. But you know that would be a false voice. Right? So we've got to maintain not just a prayer life, but a word life. Chapter 12. You still with me? Chapter 12, verse 35. That didn't hit. I'm still in chapter 11. What is it? Two in one day. Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in the darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. If you're not walking in light, you don't even know you're messing up. It's so easy to confuse reason with God's will for your life. That's why we've got to maintain this fellowship connection. But he said here, walk while you have the light, lest darkness come. As we're given truth by God, as we're given open doors of opportunity to walk with him, it's important we take advantage of those versus delay it. It's important we walk in truth when we have it, because once you compromise truth, you open doors for darkness to take over. Did you follow me on that? It says in Scripture, regarding the wicked, their evil heart was darkened because they received not the love of the truth. Can I say that again? Their evil heart was darkened because they received not a love of the truth. See, when you, when you reject light that's given to you and you don't walk in it, there's a darkening effect that takes place and you don't even realize it. But because you compromise that truth, now demonic spirits have, an, have a legal right to come in and bring deception. So this thing about walking in the light was never meant to be optional. I mean, John didn't write walk in the light as he's in the light as a, as a suggestion. That was a directive. Do you follow me? And to not do it will create a hypocritical walk instead of an illuminated walk. You'll compromise truth versus walk in truth. Often still declaring all the benefits of your Christianity. Amen. That's why there's so many compromised Christians out there. How do you know if you're a compromised Christian? Oh, you think abortion's okay. You're pushing for homosexual rights. Again, you were in a women's conference yesterday. You know, you know we have mercy on these things. But we don't authenticate them. Or justify them. Right? If you think, you know, uh, any kind of crime is okay, justify it. You compromise your Christianity. Amen. Even a, a victim mentality is somewhat compromising the light God's brought to you. Amen. So, we're to walk in this light. Now, turn to Romans 8. We're almost through the introduction. Just kidding. Romans chapter 8. Now, let's, let's restate again what we've been talking about. We're talking about how do we walk in the light. And I'm going to give you three ways we walk in the light. Number one is you walk in the perfect will of God. You walk in the way or the path God has set for you to go. Do you see this? So all these verses we've looked at are tied to that. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our 
infirmities or weaknesses, really what that should be translated. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. See, the light for you is the will of God for you. And it says when you pray in tongues, because this is talking about praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues. When you pray in tongues, you're praying God's path for you. You don't even know what you're saying. It says you make intercession for yourself according to the will of God. And you're praying, God, here's the way I should go. And maybe you're really aimed another way. But as you're praying it, then God is released by the Spirit to take you, get your attention and draw you back to the right way. Even fix damage you've done along the way. See, if you want to walk in the light, if you want to be in the path God has for you, one of the most powerful things you can do is pray in tongues a lot. Learn to stay in a tongues mentality of conversation. If you're not talking to somebody verbally, talk to yourself in tongues. Water I boss one. Just let it become habit. Well, I'll never do that because it's because you've never taken time to develop it. If you want to develop it, come to some afternoon prayer sessions with us. Come to an all night prayer. It won't take one or two all night prayer. You'll get very accustomed to praying in tongues. Because it's, how can I say, it's habit forming. We are such habitual cre creatures that if we do something a lot, we'll do it habitually. I mean, I remember when I used to play uh, ping pong or table tennis a lot back in college. You know, we had a rec room, and I'd go play table tennis all the time. I'd go to bed, and I hear tuk 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 tuk. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'll guarantee you, Larry hits golf balls in his sleep. Got to. He's got to have. He's practicing his swing in his sleep. I remember this has been 25 years or so ago. I was working at my former church, and uh, we bought a brand new computer. I went and picked it up and took it home to set it up, and it had some kind of aircraft battle game with it. I'm talking about 1995 or six, I think. It would have been six is when I moved into our house. And I said, I started playing this game. And it's where I'm flying this jet fighter over this area and shooting stuff, you know, and dodging things. And I got to play. I, I looked. I played it for four hours. I went to bed, and I tried to go to sleep, and all I said, shh. <laughs> I mean, it's just programmed in me now. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, it's because you spent so much time in front of that screen playing that it's programmed in you. And then he said this, don't ever do it again. And it's been 25 years, 26, yeah, 25 years. I have not yet played a video game in 25 years. Other than maybe drop a quarter in something, that's it. I've never I don't own any, don't have any, don't play them. Because God said, don't do that anymore. And uh, praise God for victory over these things. But it's from programming. And you can spend enough time praying in the Spirit that it just becomes habitual. Patty used to say, what are you doing? Oh, I'm praying in tongues. Didn't even realize I was praying. But the Bible says you do it, your spirit's taking over what you're saying and praying you stay on God's path. Praying that you stay in the light, walking in the light. Amen. And whatever else he needs to address in your life and even around you. So, again, the number one way we walk in the light is to stay in God's will. To know what he has for us to do and always to do it. The second area... Turn with me to Matthew chapter 16. Let 
Matthew chapter 16. And this is a passage we go to all the time in here. The disciples have come to Jesus. And Jesus asks them, asks them, Who do men say that I am? Of course, they start guessing at answers. You're Elijah, one of the prophets. But then he says to them directly, But who do you say that I am? And in verse 16, it says, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. Do you see that? And Jesus answered and said unto him. Blessed art thou Simon bar Jonah. For flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee. But my father which is in heaven. In other words. Jesus said you received that revelation. Of who I am. Directly from God himself. From the father himself. By the Holy Spirit. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock, the rock is revelation knowledge from the Spirit of God. The ability to hear God directly. Upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now we've, <laughs> Thursday night we teach on this every single Thursday night. At least most of the time. That the keys are spiritual principles. That let us function in the power of God. This is what I mentioned earlier this morning. That God gave us spiritual laws that said if you'll do these things. Power will be released from heaven to accomplish what you speak. Amen. You have authority from heaven to command creation to line up the will of God. Right? You have the ability to sow spiritual seed and cause it to see it come up a harvest. You can believe for your families to be saved. You can believe that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You follow me? All these spiritual laws that God put in the word that let us live in victory above and not beneath. To build our house on the rock and not on the sand. And so these are the keys of the kingdom. So Jesus said, the spirit of God will reveal to you the keys to let you live above and not beneath. The second area that we walk in the light are to walk in the, in the keys of the kingdom. To walk in the light that's revealed. You know, if I was to say, let me think of, if I was to say to uh, Lynn, go grab that microphone, she would have to see the microphone first. The way she sees it is light. Bounces off the microphone, is reflected off the microphone into her eye, and she perceives the microphone there. Do you follow me? So what she sees, she can then walk in. Well, Jesus said, I'm going to give you the ability to see by the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to show you these keys, so to walk in the light you've seen is to walk in the keys I reveal to you. Did you guys follow that, or was it too out there for you see to walk in the light means you walk in what's revealed is that right and God doesn't just want to reveal to you his will he wants to show you his ways how does he do things so when God shows you these spiritual truths we have a responsibility to function in them and to do so is to walk in the light It's kind of like when people come up to me and they say they need healing. And uh, I'll say, what verse are you standing on? And I'll, they'll say, well, I don't have a verse. I just want God to heal me. Well, many times they've been in here long enough to know how the kingdom functions. If you will speak to the mountain, it's got to be removed. If you'll speak to sickness, it's got to leave. And so they don't have a verse. I'm saying... You don't have an illumination to stand on. We can pray the gift manifest, you get healed. But if you really want to see healing manifest, walk in the light that's been revealed. Get you some scriptures and confess them in your life. And that power that you release will cause you to be healed. With the power you access. 
Are you guys able to stay with me this morning? Is this okay? So another form of walking of the light as he's in the light is to walk in the same spiritual principles he walked in. What did he do? He spoke to the storm, peace be still. He spoke to the demoniacs, be free, come out of him. He walked in these same spiritual laws we're to walk in. Let's look at a few more verses. I'm looking at some blank faces out there. I've got to make sure you stay with me. Job 22. Job is right before Psalms, right? Job 22, look at verse 27. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. Thou shalt also decree a thing, speak to the mountain, and it shall be established unto thee. It will be done, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Here we see the ability to decree, to speak into your situation, is tied to light shining on our ways. If you want to walk in the light, he's in the light, listen to what I'm about to say. If you're going to walk in the light as he's in the light, you can't do so unless you understand how the kingdom of God functions. Because if you don't know how the kingdom of God functions, instead of learning how to, to speak to your situations, you revert to begging and pleading with God. Oh God, won't you please heal me? Oh God, won't you please fix my situation? Oh, God, won't you please bring me some finances? Oh, God, please fix my children or whatever it might be. And God's up there going, wait, what, what, what are you doing pleading? I put in this book how you see these results. I showed you my ways in the book. If you do the book, you'll get the results. That's why God almost never answers begging and pleading. Why would he answer something he's already put the answer to in the book? Do you follow me? And walking in these ways... Walking in these principles are his will for our life to live as overcomers. So you cannot walk in the light above your level of knowledge of the principles of the kingdom. Why do you think I'm spending so much time Thursday nights teaching these things? I believe, in fact, I'm convinced these principles become key to functioning in the glory. How do you function in the glory of God if you don't know how the kingdom operates? Another key spiritual principle is forgiveness. Amen? Judge not that you be not judged. Forgive lest you, you know, so you can be forgiven. That's a spiritual law. It's a spiritual principle. If you don't know it, you'll know it, you'll walk around in unforgiveness. Listen to what I'm about to say. Unforgiveness is a natural human state of every individual. Has anybody in here never fought unforgiveness? Just raise your hand. Never fought it, right? How many of you had to fight it? How many of you sometimes you had to lay that thing down 15 or 20 times? Stomp on it, cut its head off, everything else. Not the person, the unforgiveness. You had to work your faith to operate in unforgiveness because the devil hates it or to operate in forgiveness. The devil hates it. But it's a spiritual law. And if you don't know it, you'll live in unforgiveness. And what would the result of that be? You not being forgiven. That's a key thing. So God wants us to learn these principles to live above the curse. And it's another aspect of walking in the light. The third one. The 
Ephesians chapter 5. Hope I get in the right testament, much less the right book. <clears throat> Verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Those that would disobey God's will for their life, right? You were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Here's our walking of the light, right? So what's it tell us to do to walk in the light? For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable in the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, brother, reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. One of the things we've got to do to walk in the light is to reject everything of darkness. In fact, the fullness of walking of the light is to walk in the fullness of the fruit of the Spirit. It's to walk in the glory of God. See, number one, to walk in the light we walk in God's path for, for us every day. Number two, we learn the principles of the kingdom of God to walk in the light. And we do those. And number three, we walk in the love of God it produces. Which results in the glory of God coming upon us. You've got to function in the glory to fully walk in the light. Because see, the glory is a result of light upon us and coming through us. Turn to Revelation. Revelation 21. Just go to the last page of your Bible. The last text page, right? And it's talking about the very end of times. And it says, Now the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. I need to back up here one second. Let's back up. Back up to verse 22. And I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Revelation 20, 21. 21, 22. He's talking about the new Jerusalem. I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are safe shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor unto it. And the gates shall not be closed or shut all day, all by day, for there shall be no night there. They shall bring the glory and honor to the nations of the earth. Here we see walking in the light is walking in the glory of God. So backing up to our original verse, well not the original, but in 1 John 1, 7, walk in the light as he's in the light. In fact, turn there again. I have a whole chapter to go. John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light, he's in the light. Now we know how to do it, right? It's more than just good deeds. It's functioning out of the kingdom of heaven. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. It's going to produce fellowship. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Here we even see a tie of walking in the light to our cleansing. 
I want, I want every bit of anything in my life that's displeasing to him out of my life. Do you follow me? Now understand, if we're born again and we confess our sins, we walk after Jesus, the blood continues to cleanse us. Amen? But here we see part of this walking after Jesus has got to be walking in the light. And functioning as supernatural beings. I couldn't remember if I covered this or not. You know, I have a challenge ministering to you. Because before I ever minister a message to you, I've usually ministered in my head already. Multiple times. And sometimes after a few weeks, I can't remember if I ministered in my head or I ministered it to you. Can you follow me on that? And I can't remember because I told you some weeks ago I was going to go to 1 John chapter 3 where it says we are the sons of God. Did I ever cover that? I never did teach on it. Okay. We'll go there. 1 John chapter 3. We're not going to teach on it, but I want to show you this. Just in closing. Verse 1, behold what manner of love the Father bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Look at verse 2, behold now, say now, when is now? Present tense, right? Now are we the sons of God. We're already sons of God. If you're born again, you're a child of God. You've been birthed through the same word that, that is Jesus himself. You're already a child of God, which means you are to be a supernatural being. Amen. You're to be above the natural, never limited by the natural. Yet we've had an exchange made in the church where people have exchanged respectability for their ability to function in power. People would rather be admired by the world than demonstrate power to overcome the situations of the world. And they're somewhat mutually exclusive. Amen. You're not going to function in supernatural power and have the world love you. Ask Oral Roberts. Persecution he had all of his life, even by the church, yet saw multitudes, multi more than we can imagine, people miraculously healed. Kenneth Hagin, Catherine Kuhlman, Amy Simple McPherson, Charles Finney. We could go on and on. These great men and women of God who are persecuted, even to this day, ridiculed by the world and mainstream Christianity. Because they were not willing to compromise the power of God for respectability by the world. You follow me? And we can't do that either. We've got to make a decision. I'm going to function in the power of God no matter what anybody else thinks in the world. They'll think I'm crazy. They may think I'm silly. But I'm going to see people healed by the power of God. Delivered. Situation shifted. But look at the rest of that verse. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when we, he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We're not where we're going to be yet. But as time progresses, we're going to be more and more like him and walking more and more of the light. And function more and more the supernatural power of God. But the next phrase. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. You got to cooperate with God. In his program, program to change you. Into the image of Christ. You know. So many people want to be popular more than they want to be anointed. You've got to make a decision. Amen? Because if you're after popularity, you won't raise people from the dead. 
You won't see blind eyes open, deaf ears open. Amen. You may build you a big church full of people. Amen. Have money rolling in. But there'll be no power on your life. God's looking for a church in the end times. That will walk in the light as he's in the light. Which requires no compromise. Amen. Did you get anything out of this this morning? Wayne, put us on a worship song. Let's see how we want to close this out. Let's, let's worship God here for just a minute. See what he wants to do in finishing this service.